Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. A very interesting set of comments has been made by Jensen Huang in regards to his vision of PC gaming in the future with technologies like DLSS and ACE being augmented with other AI technologies. Now, this is a pretty lengthy interview in its entirety, and it is on the More Than More Substack. Of course, I'll leave a link to it in the video description. And I won't read out all of Jensen's answer here because he does start to get more into the weeds of AI as a general concept. But he says, for AI for gaming, we've already been using it for neural graphics. We can generate pixels based on a few input pixels, and we can generate frames between frames, not interpolation but full generation. In the future, we'll also be able to generate textures and objects, and the objects can be of lower quality, and then we can make them look better. And then he goes on to mention that they could generate characters in game, and so on. Again, I won't read out the rest of that quote, but you can see it on screen if you so desire. So obviously DLSS has been around for some time now, and it started out with some ropey upscaling but things have gotten much better obviously as the technologies have improved and we also have things as he mentions like frame generation which again takes a plethora of different inputs from the game engine allows it basically to take things like the uh motion of pixels and so on and so on and then generate a new uh, set of uh, frames depending on the frame rate this can be quite a nice improvement in the motion of the game the fluidity of the game there are still some drawbacks like for example input latency but my suspicion is that this is going to get better in the future there are also technologies like ace which again uh, i have spoken about in the past which is avatar cloud engine now this is kind of like a, a if you will an umbrella term for a lot of different technologies but long story short it allows games developers to set different criteria for characters, for NPCs. For example, how helpful they are, how aggressive they are, what knowledge they've got, uh, a backstory, basically with these prompts. And we've seen this already for things like NVIDIA's uh, ramen shop demo, and it is very cool. It is still quite early days, and it's going to be a while before this becomes typical in games and that is putting it mildly however it does have a ton of potential for future especially for things like rpgs and you know you can imagine like a new i don't know like cyberpunk game or a uh, day or sex or something like that it could be very immersive and very very cool now let's move on to the new stuff that he's hinting at here now whether this is going to be part of dlss4 or whether he's just kind of spitballing my assumption is this is stuff that they are working on so basically, they'll be able to generate textures and objects. Now, this is cool from the perspective of games development in terms of, let's say that you're a studio and you make games for the, I assume at this point it's going to be the PS6 potentially, but let's just say the PS5. Um, obviously, texture quality between PC and uh, consoles, typically PCs have better textures. So in theory, if this works, as I'm presuming it will, you could basically have... DLSS, whatever the umbrella term is going to be for this, upscale or create new textures and replace them, perhaps based on your proximity to the specific object and the texture, improved models, and so on and so on. Now, that is very cool because, again, it's going to allow better porting of games. Now, I'm sure there are still going to be some games that are very rough, and obviously, it will need to support them. And it's going to be interesting to see how that is actually implemented uh, and how easy it is because well it's easy to say stuff but how easy it is to put in practice is not necessarily the same thing and for some reason some developers still bafflingly don't up really support any upscalers correct me if i'm wrong but i think like elden ring still doesn't have dlss or fsr or something like that correct me if i'm wrong on that one i may be incorrect so if i am i apologize with that said though um, this also has a lot of potential for things like remastering of games or for users doing mods. Because imagine you have a game, let's say hypothetically from 2013, where it doesn't look awful, but it doesn't look quite new, you know? This would theoretically allow you to have some very cool scenarios where you could just basically have much better textures. It would also be very interesting from the perspective of emulators as well. 
Uh, obviously, emulators, they can do a ton of different stuff. You can inject things like ray tracing and various other cool things like, you know, uh, internally run the game at higher resolutions, blah, blah, blah. So it would be very interesting if you could also generate textures. There's a lot of games, I think it's um, Yuzo or something like that, where you can uh, actually have like texture packs for games, maybe like Zelda. Um, but imagine, for example, if you could really just not have to do all of that work and just, again, use a version of DLSS. I think it's really cool. Uh, NVIDIA have done a lot of work, um, you know, kind of, I wouldn't say exactly releasing, remasters but they've given tools at the moment where you can kind of have mods for games and do some really cool stuff with like ray tracing injection and stuff like that but ultimately if you're injecting ray tracing in the game it does make it look better but obviously at the end of the day if you would have let's say high resolution textures and high resolution objects that would also make things much better because at the end of the day, if your geometry just looks still like from, you know, from the late 90s or something like that, then there's only a certain amount you can do with the lighting. You know, Quake 2, um, RTX, it looks pretty cool. Like, it does look quite nice, um, but you wouldn't mistake it for like, I don't know, like Doom Eternal. Let's just be honest with ourselves. Like, there, you know, there's only a certain amount you can, you can do with this. Again, it's gonna be very interesting to see just how well this is scalable and how well it applies. I think that it's gonna be very cool to see what the future holds. I actually think that there is some very interesting scenarios as well for consoles. Um, this is not a leak, but this is just like speculative. But in theory, you could definitely have a console that could do things like injecting ray tracing. Like if you look at the Xbox, for example, you could maybe have like specific API calls just basically just kind of do something entirely different. Because if you're a console uh, manufacturer, you can basically do pretty much what you want with like backwards compatibility. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see if the console manufacturers do that. Honestly, don't know one way or the other. Like, that, again, isn't a leak. But, you know, a new Xbox, theoretically, um, and it does have AI capabilities, and obviously um, the Microsoft team are saying that they're going to really push backwards compatibility and make that a priority. Again, words are cheap. At the end of the day, they have to fulfill that. It could be very cool. Same thing for the PS6. Like, the PS6, theoretically, should be able to natively just absolutely murder something like PS3 emulation. Um, because, you know, they could pretty much brute force it at that point. I don't know what CPU the PS6 is going to have, but presumably it's at the very minimum going to be roughly on par with an 8-core Zen 5 or probably Zen 6 or something by the time the thing releases, assuming they're sticking with AMD. I believe they are, so realistically, at minimum... It's going to be Zen 5, but it's realistically going to be more like Zen 6 or 7 at that point. Again, assuming that they do release, because at the time, the, the um, to give you an idea, roughly speaking, the Ryzen 5000 series, which was powered by Zen uh, 3, was roughly releasing at the same time as the PlayStation 5. So we could probably presume like Zen 6 would be pretty accurate by 2027. Again, we'll have to wait and see. But um, moving back to the PC side of things, I'm going to be very interested to see what we end up with this. But uh, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.